The world is in a current state of pandemic, and with the COVID-19 crisis, each and every one of us is living through what will eventually be in history books, something that we will turn back to to learn from. Nonetheless, in this current situation, the uncertainty of the COVID-19 crisis will undoubtedly provoke anxiety in individuals and has already done so. With that being said, this anxiety and uncertainty provides fertile soils to sustain conspiracy theories that people turn to in order to soothe their stress. Everyone is searching for answers, but the important thing is that we learn how to find the right ones and how to think critically about the news that is being fed to us. Welcome back to NeuroPsyQ. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the neuroscience behind conspiracy theories. Before we get started, I just want to say that today we have a quiz attached to the video. So if you pay attention as we get rolling, and you want to test your knowledge afterwards, feel free to click it. The link is below. It's just a quick multiple choice and it's great for you to consolidate your learning. Conspiracy theories are the idea that some group in power is plotting something for their own gain. These tend to arise during periods of pandemic and crisis because of the uncertainty that comes with these times. When we don't have answers, we feel threatened and we search and desperately try to clutch to any information that will help us get over the fear that we're having. With that being said, we also look for somebody to place the blame on because it's really hard for us to accept that some things are just out of our control. We've seen conspiracies arise during other times of pandemic, including during the Zika virus outbreak of 2015. And now with the COVID-19 crisis, we're seeing just as many conspiracies pop up in the media. This is also heavily influenced by our psychology. It comes down to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. On the bottom of the pyramid are food and shelter. And the third peg on the pyramid is safety. When our safety is threatened, Maslow says we can't achieve the other needs on the scale. And so in a time like this, when we feel threatened by a virus in our environment, we're searching for something to make us feel safe again. And sometimes theories that come up in the media can be just the soother we need to get on with our lives. Along with that, there's confirmation bias. And that's the fact that we are more likely to hold on to ideas that confirm our already existing beliefs rather than acknowledge contradictory evidence. And finally, there's something that psychology lecturer Dr. Daniel Jolly likes to refer to as proportionality bias. And this is the fact that we often try and make the cause proportional to the effect. And so he states that with something like coronavirus, it's hard for us to believe that a virus could stem from animals and cause such a worldwide outbreak and this huge pandemic that we're experiencing. So this is where conspiracies come into play, where something more proportional to the effect that we are seeing is used to explain what's happened. When asked about ways that we can intervene with conspiracy theories, Dr. Daniel Jolly says that taking them down isn't exactly the answer because that increases mistrust too. When people see the media controlling the news that is being fed to them, they start to question why they'd want to hide something, why they'd want to remove that. And so he says a better way is to let it be available, but make the algorithms on something like Facebook, for instance, more geared towards displaying what's true rather than theories that aren't backed by evidence. So why do we believe conspiracy theories? Why are we so susceptible to them? Well, the way our brain is wired is in a way that helps us see patterns. For instance, you see a cloud in the sky and you think, oh, it's probably gonna rain. 
You see snow melting, you associate that with the fact that spring's coming. You feel cold wind, you know you've got to get ready for winter. These cues and this ability to process patterns is very important for us to be able to survive in the environment we live in. But the brain's gotten so good at this that sometimes we see patterns where they don't even exist. In fact, one example of this is in gambling or when we're observing random probability. In a study where people watch somebody flip a coin, if there seems to be some sort of pattern, for instance, it's landing more on heads, less on tails, that's gonna influence their choice when really the reality is the probability is still 50-50. This is called the probability heuristic. Pattern processing happens in the cerebral cortex and particularly there's involvement of the occipital lobe, which is for vision. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that attaches salience to things that we view in our environment. And so it helps us figure out what's actually a signal and what is noise. So something that's been seen in people that are more susceptible to believing in conspiracies is that they have more dopamine. People with high dopamine tend to often see patterns in random shapes. So for instance, if you've ever sat outside and looked at the clouds and you see faces in them, that's an example of pattern processing. And our ability to do so can also go into overdrive and cause us to see patterns where they don't exist. One of the ways to reduce people's beliefs in conspiracies is not by telling them that it's not true. Because as we already mentioned, confirmation bias is going to cause them to disregard your opinion. The fact is that people who believe in conspiracies are often feeling helpless. And so one of the best ways is to empower them and to help them feel like there is a way out. In one of Dr. Jolly's studies, he finds four things that tend to influence people's belief in conspiracy. And these are dangers in the environment, powerlessness, so feeling like you have no control over a situation, disillusionment, and mistrust in the authorities. So by making somebody feel like they can make it out, that can help them overcome their beliefs and it can help shed light on the scenario they're in. In a paper published in 2017 called The Psychology of Conspiracy Theories, Douglas, Sutton, and Kichoka stated that there are three motives responsible for our desire to believe in conspiracies. These motives include epistemic, existential, and social. Epistemic is our need to understand the environment. And so as I was saying, it's the search for an explanation for random events. The existential motive is our desire to find control and security. And finally, the social aspect is our desire to maintain a positive image and belong. So this can happen when people are in groups talking about something. A lot of them will end up with the same belief by the end of the conversation. Just because people conform. The study also showed that people who are more educated and have higher analytical thinking are less prone to believing in conspiracies. So we now know why people fall victim to conspiracies and it's just because they're so desperate to find an answer. But why is it that once somebody commits to a theory, it's so hard for them to acknowledge evidence that goes against what they believe. Well, it seems that our brain is actually wired to attach more salience to evidence that supports our beliefs. We're not sure why this happens, but a study that was published in Nature Neuroscience in December 2019 showed what was going on in the brain with people that were dealing with confirmation evidence and evidence that went against their beliefs. These individuals in the study were asked to guess the price of real estate, but to provide motivation, they were also asked to make a bet on how sure they were that their estimate was correct. This was done in order to attach motivation to the task. They were also introduced to a partner in the study, and what happened was they'd make their guess, and then they would see what they thought was their partner's guess, and what they thought was their partner's bet. In reality, these were computer-generated guesses. 
The guesses were generated in a way so that 50% of the time they aligned with the participant's belief and the other 50% of the time they weren't the same and went against what the participant thought. They also saw different bets, so higher or lower, to kind of demonstrate how sure their partner was of their guess. What the researchers saw in the study was that people were more likely to increase their bet if the partner agreed with them. And this was directly related to how much money their partner bet on it as well. They also found when their partner didn't agree, there was no significant influence on whether or not the participant would change their bet. While this was happening, all the participants were in an fMRI machine and their posterior medial prefrontal cortex was monitored because this is an area that has been shown to be associated with persistence. Persistence is whether or not somebody is going to change their mind and so, like I said, the posterior medial prefrontal cortex is in charge of this action. It's something that can be tested with the Wisconsin card sorting task which is a task in which cards have shapes, colors, and numbers on them and the participant either has to say the number of shapes, they either have to say the type of shape or the color of the shape and the researcher will change the task and measure how many errors they make when the changing happens. Some people find this very difficult and if they started by saying colors on the card won't be able to switch over to stating what shape is on the card in the next trial. In the study that we're talking about, the medial prefrontal cortex was shown to be more active when individuals had the same beliefs or made a similar estimate to the participant. And it was shown that a confirming opinion had more influence on the final bet rather than a disconfirming opinion. So people were more likely to increase their bet when they had a supported opinion of a partner rather than decrease it if their partner thought otherwise. Now that you know how hardwired we are to believe in conspiracy and how easily any one of us can fall victim to these theories, I just want you to think critically about every piece of information you're presented with. As was seen in that study I mentioned earlier, people who were primed for analytical thinking were less likely to believe in conspiracies. So practice your analytical thinking question the evidence that is given to you and make sure that you're not just clutching at straws. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit and I hope to see you next week with our next video on Saturday. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Leave any suggestions you have down below and remember take the quiz if you want to test your knowledge. See you next week. Stay happy and healthy.